We are in the winner bracket final. The bathrobe boys against the cats. It is the first qualifier for the Banshee Cup, everybody. Banshee Cup number one. Uh, well, qualifier number one, but also Banshee Cup number one. And it's all thanks to Kevin. All ke thanks to Psykiff. He's been the Heroes of the Storm sugar daddy for a while now. He's the one that you guys can thank for for the big offline event that we had in Berlin, for example. He owns the uh, land center in Miami where we had two offline events in uh, 2022. And he's just been an absolute pillar of the Heroes of the Storm community, really making a lot of this possible. And this tournament here is no exception. Banshee Cup is actually kind of named after him because his favorite hero is Sylvanas and, well, the Banshee Queen. So the Banshee Cup is a bit of an homage to that. He sponsors the entire prize pool, entire event here. So we have $2,500 of prize money for this. We have six qualifiers in total that will lead into the playoffs. And I already teased it a little bit, but we have a bit of a twist that only comes into play when we're heading into the playoffs. I'm not going to tell you just yet what it is. We're going to do that just before the playoffs start. But suffice it to say that we were thinking about, hey, how can we make some of these games a bit more interesting for you guys? What can we do outside of the Meta Madness concept, which is, of course, awesome. But we can also not run this every single tournament. And we came up with some pretty cool ideas, and I hope that you're going to like them. If you have any suggestions, what you think it's going to be, any guesses, by all means, feel free to drop a comment. But it's going to be good. It's going to be pretty good. I'm actually curious to see if anybody guesses it. But yeah, as we're heading into the winner bracket final, this is the best of three series. So we are following the same format roughly that we used for Meta Madness. We have best of threes, the finals in the uh, qualifiers are always best of fives. We uh, have also widened the map pool a little bit, all direct passes in. The teams can also pick maps like Haunted Mines, which we have actually already seen, which was pretty spectacular as well. But as we're going into our first map of this series between the Cats and the Bathrobe Boys, we have Chogal banned out. So, yeah, there we go. One, by the way, one rumor that we immediately dispel. I talked about this in the, another game. The first suggestion that most people come up with when they're talking about, like, what could we use as a format is that you draft for the opponent's team. It's insanely boring, guys. It's the dumbest system ever. We tried this once in HGC, and the problem is simply that within two maps, teams figure out the meta, and then you see the same heroes every single game. Every single game. Even in HGC, when we had those show matches back then, where teams did it, they started picking other heroes just as a fan service because they said, like, it would have been the most boring thing ever. We just picked the same heroes every single game. There is no deviation whatsoever. So in theory, a great concept but something that in practice just doesn't work. You maybe do a show match with it just to have like, you know, some fun games, but as soon as you're putting prize money on the line, it's not really something that you want to have. And it's also not nearly as fun as you would think in your head. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock, honest, well, not shock, but it was a bit of a surprise as well when we realized it too, so. But okay, either way, we have uh, Varian and Stukov. Finally, like, I've been waiting for this actually for a while now. We've seen a lot of sniper compositions, uh, or at least attempts and such. And now we get Varian, we get Stukov, so it seems like the cats are trying to execute exactly that. But it is an Abathur game, which in and of itself already makes me happy. Abathur is in the house, and we get Lucio together with it. This is already, it's actually funny how when you have Abatha, how annoying every single hero is that you pick. Lucio with an Abatha hat. Ugh. Like, who wasn't chased down by a Lucio that has a symbiote on top of it yet? Everybody knows how annoying this is. You're running, you're trying to get away, you think you can escape, all of a sudden a symbiote appears and you're just sitting there like, why me? So, yeah. In this case, Lucio is already a really good recipient for the symbiote just to be annoying. We get Nova and Jojo. What is happening? What? Nova was played, I believe, once? Twice? Once? In Meta Madness? And now we get Nova here? Dino don't get too cocky, my friend. You guys already lost the map today. So it seems like they think they have the cats... Nova? Alright. Seems like they think they have the cats figured out. I am not so sure. We get Zeratul and we get Dehaga. 
So, let me see what we're getting from Ultralisk now. <laughs> I am very eager to see how this is going to work out for them. Guys, Nova is going to be the only range damage dealer for them. Just keep that in mind, right? This is the only range damage dealer. So, yeah. Color me intrigued. Ultralist, final pick. Genji. So they don't have a real side laner. Okay. They have to send somebody else over. Guys, Towers of Doom, map number one. We are in the winner bracket final. Let's go, everybody. Let's see which team takes the lead here. The Bathrobe Boys against the Cats. So we are going into game number one, everybody. Let's see what the teams can pull off here. Particularly, of course, what Nova can do in this context right now. Is she able to be the deciding factor in favor of the blue team or not? On the left side, we get Hazo Orbs for Abatha. We got Ultralisk for Genji. Death Knight is playing Lucio, Masquerade, Johanna and Dino on Nova. On the right side of the map, Dark Reader, aka Drak here with Varian, Deviant is playing Stukov, Kettenrex on Junkrat, soaking on the Haka, and Hirath is playing Zeratul. So, time to shine. <laughs> First of all, I can't believe we got Nova in the house. Nova is already at it. Nova with Abyssa. It could be kind of funny. It could really be funny. I am honestly looking forward to see what exactly the blue team can pull off here. But Nova has not really a fantastic track record. She can get some good damage in, but I am not sure how much we are really looking at here. So uh, let's see what Dino can do. Already getting a little bit of an assist here. Getting the Symbiote, which is obviously helping a bit. The pressurized glands are in. And that allows for even more burst damage, I'd say. But I want to see how Zeratul is going to deal with this. Because I would still assume that Heroes is going to try and take Dino out whenever he gets a chance. Abathar is of course a bit of a game changer in any kind of composition where you can play that. Soaking at the top with his body already. And in the meantime uh, the teams are starting to go for camps. But oof. That is bad news for Varian. Varian is gone. The camp at least gets taken. But first blood goes to the bathrobe boys. And second blood as well. They go for a double kill. They take down Varian and they kill Stukov. Off to a good start. Very aggressive here with Nova Genji. Not playing a proper side lane. And instead relying on Abathai in that slot very heavily now. And I would assume to an extent, obviously, Genji, who then can move towards the top lane. He has the mobility here very easily to rotate between lanes. You can also empower that a bit more with Lucio. And let's not forget that Genji with Abatha is obviously fantastic. Helps you so much when you're trying to, uh, to make some plays in the opponent's backline in particular. A bit of a leading experience right now still for the Cats, mostly uh, thanks to uh, what they have up here at the top. That experience is going to get soaked back quickly, but already some moves being made for... Uh oh For Nova! And Dino, wow, gets out! Zeratul missing the kill there. I thought he would be able to get it, but thankfully for him, he's not alone. Stukov comes in together with Varian, and the two of them take Dino apart. So Nova is first blood. The real game starts at level 10 when the bathrobe boys have access to uh, the copy on Abathar's side. But right now, Abathar is just annoying everybody with the symbiote all over the place. Not enough though, because Masquerade, don't tell me he gets away. Okay, <laughs> I was about to say, there's no way he gets out there. <laughs> Taunt is obviously a huge problem now too. Hasn't been in this particular fight, but now with level 4, Varian. He's a real boy! Finally, a real hero and not an oversized minion. Uh, triple altar phase. They already get one. So far, so good. But we also have an addition to that now. The rapid projection. And we get the strike at the heart. And actually, it's starting to go for Nova again. And Dino is already having the same problems that every Nova player in the past always had. You don't have real escape tools. Yeah. Taunt and bye-bye. So, easy kill right then and there. That's the second kill against Nova. And again, it highlights the problem once more. She doesn't have an escape tool. If you're playing Zaratul against, uh, you have a mobility, you can blink away. This is a neat move from Ultralisk, but only up to the point where we have Dehaka coming in. At least he got a kill. Despite the fact that they were trying to gank up on him, he gets the kill and the trade. So, seven against six now. And they're trying to delay. 
Their mission is to delay this first objective for as long as possible because, as I said before, they want level 10 as quickly as they can for those objectives so that they can play around Abatha and his copy. That's really what they need. So, let's see what they can do. We currently have the two-for-one trade on uh, shots. That was to be expected. Anything else would have been a huge surprise. But, yeah. I'm still... To me, it's a bit weird that they're picking over here, because it's one thing if you're winning the first game and then you're saying, okay, we're risking something in game number two, but now, if you lose this one with Nova, then you are two. You have to win two in a row, and it's gonna get a little bit wild. Now, if they can coordinate their attacks properly and really unleash all of the damage, and I'm not saying they can't win that game here, that's definitely a possibility. They're also the favorites. I mean, this team is an absolute power team, as you can see. Bathrobe Boys, they formed for this team. Technically, their team name is Bathrobe and Enjoyers. I have no idea why they went for the End Enjoyers, because, I mean, if they're all enjoying Masquerade's Bathrobe, then yeah, congratulations, but we already have a team that's called <laughs> Enjoyers in the tournament. And they were first. They participated in the last one already. So, yeah. But either way, we currently have them with some fair amount of damage. They are the favorites for sure, just simply because they have, uh, I mean, a huge amount of top players in this that have played in pretty much, I mean, all of these guys have played in a team that has won major tournaments in the last five years. Every single one of them, without exception. So, yeah, this is pretty much an all-star team that we're looking at right now. Soaking, getting back out. Double altars coming up. And here you can actually see it. So the double altars coming up just as they have level 9. If they would be a bit closer to level 10 or can delay this, this would be the dream. You want to get that symbiote in. You want to get that copy. But level 10 will be ready for the cats. And once that your opponent has level 10 and you don't, you just simply have to let it go. You got to fall back. That's the problem that they're facing here. And they were fully aware of this. So now they can try and get the worm a little bit closer. But they sneak one of the altars. Nice! That's actually pretty sick. Getting one of the altars is huge. Red team already had level 10. They didn't, so both of them should have gone to the cats. But they are able to delay this a little bit further. So each team walks away with four shots fired. And now we have level 10. Any second now. Abathur is still using Mule whenever he can to try and repair a few of the outer structures. But that was well done. And Genji with Symbiote is such a nuisance. I mean, there's level 10 and now it's party time. With that, we now get Orbital, the Precision Strike, and we have High Five in. Also, of course, the Copy. But yeah, now, now it's gonna be fun. Right now, we will see, uh, hopefully, some coordinated plays around these team fires with uh, maybe a double Genji even. Just jump in and try to make that play. Varian at the bottom of the map also gets killed. So Jojo able to drop him. They used the ult on Jo- the, the, the two blondies working together pretty much. Ult from uh, Jojo and then follow up from uh, Nova with a precision strike. And it led to a quick kill. So without taunt as a threat, they can push for this. And they're even pushing past. Easily past that bell tower and are seriously threatening Junkrat, forcing Stukov to react too and help him out further. Even the Haka is forced back down to the bottom of the map. Ultralis has to be a bit more careful, buying himself a little bit of time, zips out, no real issue here for him. But that was nicely done. And the combo is back up. Precision Strike is in, 10 more seconds until Jojo has her ult back. So we'll see if they can uh, utilize the same move again as we have the altar spawning in only 13 seconds. 15,000 damage for Junkrat, 20,000 for Nova. Player killer number one is already reigning supreme here with 20k also for Genji. Not going for too many of the camps here. There's the copy and bye-bye. Zeratul gets killed, another Nova kill. She's able to get them murdered. And now they're chasing after Varian and uh, Drakia is gonna die. So they get another double kill and they're, they're getting a triple. Amatha is able to lock down Stukov and drop him. So now we have seven kills to four. They've taken the lead in experience. They're taking the altar and now they can go for the bell tower at the bottom of the map. Or at least they can start to take some of these minions out proxy some of the waves here or at least get them low and then move easily back out to put a pressure onto the bot lane and also hopefully guard the top side but yeah nicely done 
Still level 13 versus 13 in a moment, but this is pretty nice. Abby Genji doing tons of work here, and Nova, obviously, the more space she has, the better for her. If she can actually just get enough space and time to get her damage out, then she can be a problem, and that's the case here. 3v1 against the Haka. As Abitha jumped in, that's another kill, so now they're looking at 8 kills, and the damage just keeps coming. Dino also using uh, the rapid projection to scout, gets another kill! Stukov down, and now they're chasing them. They're hunting them down one after another. Varian, good luck, my friend. He's dead too, and they're just picking up these kills wherever they see a red hero. Heroes of the Storm, Whack-A-Mole is what we see them play here. Yeah, zoning precision strike, forces Junkrat over to the left, gives them enough time to con connect the damage, and that is another kill. They're just staggering the kills against the red team now, and they're also dropping that bell tower down at the bottom of the map. <laughs> we actually get Nova <laughs> murdering people. 27,000 damage for her. I mean, Genji has taken over. He's leading the leaderboard with 32k, 5,000 ahead. But Nova has done serious work and gotten multiple kills now. And we have a double wave coming up. And, yep, Jojo is forcing Zaratul back. So that's five shots fired already. Thanks to Dainu over on the right side. Yeah, is that an interrupt? Yep, it is. They actually were able to interrupt it. Okay. So they interrupted the channel and have now a chance to fight for this one. Half a level until 16, but that choke point might work in their favor. Lucio getting attacked, and he's dead. Lucio is down. Boah. Trying to go for Captain Rex there, but he survives. But he's also missing in the fight now. Genji, on the other hand, is getting murdered by Stukov and the Lurking Arm. And they're losing too much now. But Stukov at least gets killed. It's still a bit of a back and forth between the two teams here. But there's too many that are dead on the red team, on the blue team side. And with the exception of Abathur, they're getting all killed. Every single one of them has been eliminated. So three shots at least get fired. And it gives them a bit more time and space to try and work on the bell tower conversion at the bottom of the map. Good start, at least initially, for the blue team. Abby is still sitting very far back here, and now with 16 also trying to control the macro game a bit more. Going for the... Uh, what am I saying? Sorry, my bad. Adrenaline boost for him. Misread the thing for just a second. So, yeah. Soma Transference on 13. That was a no-brainer. And then Adrenaline Boost, but now we have the Explosive Round and also the Psychotic Efficiency for Nova. So she's going to line the damage up as best as she can, and Dino is already on the way to the top to try and deal with the Zaratul here. They got their precision strike again. So if they want to execute the combo again during one of the team fights, there's a big chance coming up right now with the next triple altar phase that's going to pop up. So as is, we are getting the attack through the bot lane with pumpkins for each team. Everybody is moving onto the bot of the map. There's also one of the altars that's going to spawn there, obviously. I don't think that anybody can take a bell tower before that even happens, but yeah, they're going for soaking again, and he's dead. Well, actually, he had essence left. Not bad. I thought he used it already. Okay, soaking gets out. They love to gank the Haka here, though. And it's honestly pretty easy when you're having Abatha. Abatha is just such a game changer. There's a reason why he starts to get spammed a whole lot. I love watching the slug. If you have a team that coordinates plays with Abatha properly, it's such a joy to watch. And well, in this case, they're already getting Abby. Hazu is using Genji, is jumping uh, to force them back very quickly. But it was a bit of an early ult there too. So they got to be a bit careful. I honestly thought that they would wait for the objective before they're using it. They're zoning them away nicely, but the red team has a chance to go for a double hit at the top. Lucio is at the bottom of the map. He can speed his way up towards the top. I mean, even Abathur theoretically could at some point start to go for one of the altars. And I think in the late game, that might actually happen. So now it's 21 points to 19. It's super close on that. Uh, Genji gets some help. Precision strike. Big damage. Big damage. And the kill as the Dragon Blade of Genji gets whipped out. Big jump also from Varian. I mean, he jumped deep for this one. I'm not quite sure what exactly happened there, but he was able to... Ah, he went for Genji. Dove for Genji, and Genji zipped out. So Varian following all of that, but that leads to his demise too. They got Jojo, so it's really just blow for blow, kill for kill the entire time. Each team lost two, and now the chance to go for the channel. They're trying to create a little bit of space for Lucio so that he can pull that one off, and it's working out for them. 
Nova with an attempt at a hit, but they gotta be careful of the Harker, and everybody is rushing away again. Ugh, and he doesn't get it. Wanted to get the drag here, unable to get it. A little bit more damage done. Quest also completed for Dino, at least for now, so the damage is with the baseline even improved here, as you can see. So let's see if they can do it again. Oh! <laughs> damage on Stukov. <laughs> ah, but that is the end of Nova. Nova is gone. 14 kills, 211. And those are things that you don't really have to do, but I guess they felt quite confident on this one. Again, the position sniper has actually been stacked. So right now, we currently have this one uh, fully completed. I mean, if he's able to keep that up, the damage output is going to be pretty sexy. And he's already at 49,000. So we have this consistent battle between Genji and Nova when it comes to top damage in the game. Nobody on the red team is yeah, getting anywhere near those numbers. Is able to pull that off. So 26k for Lucio right uh, for, uh, for, uh, for Zeratul right now. Yeah, but the battle down at the bottom of the map. The Harker could even come in. Blessed Shield, they're starting to commit. Dragon Blade is out too. Here comes the copy, and bye bye Zeratul. Goodbye Stukov. They go for the triple. They take all three of them out, and now the Harker is deep, maybe too deep. They're going for Jungret first, and they take him, and now it's time to hunt soaking. They have everyone down here, can definitely go for another kill. They want the five man wipe, and they are about to get it. And that opens up the bell tower, that opens up a potential play for boss if they want to. So many opportunities right now. The world's their oyster, as they go for a channel without getting the bell tower conversion. I mean, they don't have heroes that really excel at structural damage. It's not like they're running Grey Main. But they get the four shots fire that drops the red team down to 11 points on their core. But I think they could have really just gone for uh, the bot lane conversion with the team and then get the extra point. The way they are pulling this off now, though, they're going for the boss and look at Dino. <laughs> Solo, baby! Ah, well, actually, it's not really a solo. First of all, now he has assistance from Lucio, too, but he also had some Abatha assistance, so yeah, doesn't really count. But there it is. Single digits on the red team score as Nova gets the boss and drops the opponent down to seven points. With the pumpkins moving in, really looking good here too. Might be able to get this one with Abatha. Actually, they need the rotation, I assume. And they're already getting over there with at least a few of their heroes. With level 20, we now get, as usual, the glory to the Alliance. We get the Twilight Falls. And they're still poking this a bit, but the bell tower is holding on for a bit longer. Dino could all... Like, if he wanted to, he could always snipe it with a precision strike. Could always try and do that. Blessed Shield has two charges now. First one already used and might even go for a second one. Lucio is dead, though. Lucio's gone, and so is Stukov. No, Stukov, get out! Stukov got out! There's the drag and the kill, and that's a double, baby! They get a double kill, and Masquerade is the third one to die. This game isn't over yet. Nova should try and get the Bell Tower now, just to make sure that they are not losing too many points. So Dino has a chance to go for it, and he will do that. Moves in, snipes it, alright? That means they have only three Bell Towers, so even with the double altar, it's only going to be six points. The question is, can Nova get out? And yeah, it's looking good. Nova is able to escape, able to make it out here, so good job. Three shots already fired, next three are coming in, nicely done by the Haka. 15 points to 7. <laughs> and Zeratul got her! Zeratul got Dainu! Alright, Nova gone, staggered death, and well, can you say momentum, baby? Because now we're talking about one bell tower destroyed. The Haka is working on the second. They have the one at the bottom right that they can get. Even with Abatha trying to mule this up, I think he's going to be able to do it. But yeah, this is... If, if you're the blue team, you're definitely starting to get a little bit worried. Simply because in the late game on Towers of Doom, a game can easily flip if your opponent starts to get map control. And with these staggered deaths that they are executing now against Nova in this case, that is a problem. So yeah. They need to take control back. We have four bell towers, two four at this point, but this one is obviously going to be taken. So they need to try and work on the one at the bottom of the map. Which they will do in a moment. 
but it's a wild game though. And if you look at experience, it's actually level 22 already for the cats. They are four kills behind, but they are taking the lead in experience. Just to give you a bit of an idea, in uh, particularly minion experience, they're way ahead. 5,000 ahead in uh, minion experience. Yeah, Bell Tower is about to be taken. And they're just getting it in time. Flank is already coming. But now it's a very, very stable position for both teams. Four Bell Towers to four. Everybody with five heroes on the map and 20. Oh boy. Essence used by soaking again. And maybe a little bit too deep there. But as long as he doesn't die, it's all, all fine. So, here's the chance. Who takes this one? If the bathroom boys get it, then uh, a single altar channel or a boss would end the game. They have to watch for Zeratul though. Oh, the precision strike! Holy shit! And then it is Genji with the Dragon Blade that comes in and takes Stukov down. Now they're trying to go for... Oh my god! Nova! Nova is dead and so is Lucio. But they lost Varian. They lost Varian. Genji is still alive. He goes for the first channel. That's double altar up. Genji could go for the channel and left it. It's a two versus... It's a two versus three. Genji didn't go for a channel. Needs a little bit of healing, which he's getting right now. And Jojo at the bottom of the map is starting this up. Shield is already out. Here comes Genji, trying to go for him. The Haka is channeling in the middle. Something that Genji could have done earlier. But they get one kill, so it, sh it should be a trade. It should be a trade here. The Haka is the only one that is still left. Gets immediately attacked, and that might have been the death sentence for the Haka. Unless he has Essence here, he has a problem. Gets the Fountain Challenge at least. But they need to get that Bell Tower down at the bottom. Uh, sorry, that altar at the bottom of the map. There's no reason not to get it. And it's Abasa who claims it. The slug uh, comes in. It's uh, it's honestly, this is, uh, is a job for the boss. And now he gets eaten. <laughs> Too late, baby! Yeah, Soaking was trying and couldn't eat the worm. So, they go for the boss and yep, there's position strike number one. They go and go for position strike number two. Easy peasy, but here's the fight. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's a four versus three. <laughs> they steal it. They stole it. Get wrecked. Get absolutely wrecked. Seven points to three. They just stole it. They came in and they went for the slap. Check this out. <laughs> Too damn good. Like, thank you. Thanks for doing the hard lifting here. We're gonna take this one. Appreciate it, boys. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh my god. Too damn good. 20. We have 40 kills in this game. 40 kills. Yeah, and Dehaka gets the burrow and is able to move out. Well, also I thought, and then he gets still killed. Dehaka gone. Lucio's alive. 5 versus 4. 83,000 damage for Genji. 83,000. Single altar, soaking dying is a disaster. Not the moment to die here. Varian did have a rough game, by the way. Seven deaths on Varian. Six deaths to be fair on Stuka Vanova, so it's not like he's all alone over there at the top. There's multiple heroes that have had it pretty rough in this one. But here's the chance. You're playing a five versus four. There's the copy on Abatha. They're trying to go for Zeratul. The channel has already started. Need to interrupt it. They know it. They're trying. They're going for it. And it is over. It is game. GG. Game number one goes to the bathroom boys as they take the lead in this series. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two, Inferno Shrines is our second map and we have the Cats down one game in the series. Nova, 100% win rate, don't know what to tell you guys. Player killer number one, obviously best hero in the game, no re GG. 
Uh, quick note, by the way, I've been talking a little bit about the format, and if you watch other games in this uh, tournament, then you already know, but heroes can only be played once within a series. We don't have any pre-bans, there's no pre-bans for the qualifiers, no pre-bans for the playoffs, no pre-bans for the finals, nothing like that, but just to make sure that we're not gonna be bored out of our mind by seeing the same heroes over and over and over again, you can only play a hero once within a series. It's a little bit of a tip to add to the Meta Madness rules, but again, very the light version of it so now that we're in the second game we have the cats of course with the attempt to bring this back force a third map and uh, maybe then move on to the grand final but they are clearly the underdog in uh, this particular series if a team loses here they're not out yet though there is a loser's bracket so we have a winner bracket and we have a loser bracket for every single qualifier we're all playing this out and in case that i haven't said it before if you guys actually want to participate in some of the qualifiers if you want to just get some friends together have some fun play a game or two and maybe face off you know against the bathroom boys yourself you can all do that we are announcing every single qualifier on my twitter account on discord there's usually a thread on reddit as well all those links can be found in the description of the video if you're watching this currently so this is qualifier number one but again you can check out the other ones too but as we're heading now into this, we have the ban on my F. We get a well, Ultralisk getting targeted with a my F ban, of course. And we get tanks quickly eliminated against the cats. So goodbye, Nuburak. Goodbye, Garrosh. Clearly targeting the front line here. We figured out that uh, currently uh, Drakia is the one playing tank for the team. And apparently they're just targeting whatever he's playing there. Saying, like, yeah, I think we're going to deal with that a bit. So, let's see. We got Diablo. But that forces the Diablo first pick. Just saying. Normally you would... Oh my god, no way. We get Chogal. Damn, the Barthro boys are on a tear today. First we're getting Nova, now we're getting Chogal from them. <laughs> That's a first pick. <laughs> Oh my god. They do that against the cats. The cats, by the way, played Shogal. Was it against them? Was it against the saboteurs where the cats played Shogal? I still remember they did it, but obviously if you play that as your first pick, then you are going to get countered. So Leo and Greymane get instantly picked. I wonder... Yeah. Are they banning Malthale? Do we have to ban Malthale here? I mean... Might be a decent ban, honestly. You can always counterplay with Molten Block a bit, but yeah, they go for Bright Ring instead, so they're targeting the support, but it's kinda nuts. Yeah, Bathrobes are, are clearly enjoying this. We got Alexstrasza, she obviously works fairly well with Chogal too. Could still go for Oriel, obviously, if we're attempting to go for Resurrect or something, but yeah, Alexstrasza is out, and let's see what else they're getting. Chogal for the blue team. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> From Nova to Chogal, that's what we're getting. Greyman is gonna have the bullet. Soaking is just gonna drain. And we get Oriel and we have Phoenix. Phoenix is not really what I expected to see together with this. When it comes to support for Deathline, I mean what is Deathline even gonna get? Currently, Masquerade has locked in Oriel. Is Masquerade really going to play a support here? Can't be, right? They're going to swap heroes around. Masquerade was probably, uh, I don't know, doing whatever. And not ready to pick his hero. Zagara and Rhaegar. Yeah, I mean, again, the cats have played Shogun in the past. They kind of know what works against him. So they're going for Zagara now. They have Zagara, Greyman, and Leo. That's a lot of good damage against Shogun. So let's see if that works for them. They're obviously... Uh, they have a very clear mission, and that is to destroy Chogal wherever they find him. What is Death... What is the last pick, though? It's not really for Death Knight. They're gonna swap heroes around. It's murky. Octograb into... Brrr. They're going for the full shebang here, guys. They haven't gotten the memo. They don't know this is Meta Madness. This is the Banshee Cup. I swear to God. But let's go. Game number two. <laughs> Infernal Shrines here at the winner bracket final, and it's getting wild. Second game of the best of three series here in the winner bracket final and boy oh boy We have indeed Masquerade on Murky, Ultralisk is playing Cho, Hazobs on Gal, Dino with Phoenix and Death Knight on Oriel I mean they went deep deep for this draft 
And of course, Phoenix with brrrr once that Murky goes for the Octo Grab. I mean, that's already given. But in the meantime, the cats with Drakia on Greymane, Captain Rex on Zagara, Soaking playing Diablo. We have Deviant on Rega, and Hereth is playing Diablo. Okay, here we are. With this particular draft, it should get pretty. I mean, pretty interesting if they can win with this. This is definitely stretching things a little bit right now. They're playing the super safe, super slow. Time is obviously working in favor of the bathrobe boys. If you have a late game Chogal, he is so much more powerful than uh, early on. But also this murky combo with Phoenix is pretty, pretty good. I mean, good in the sense that you can do a lot of damage. I mean, ex imagine for a second if Murky is able to get an Octo Grab on Zagara. She's instantly dead. She has no chance of survival if Dino gets his ult out. So that's just one example. You can do the same with a lot of other heroes there on uh, the red team side. But yes, there are chances to snipe people. So, Wahoo Ops. <laughs> yeah, Wahoo Ops is uh, already roaming the map. And up at the top, we got Murky. Masquerade on Murky? I'm actually not sure to think about this, honestly. Masquerade on Murky just feels more than a little bit strange. It's wild. This is really wild. But yeah, yeah now he can int at his heart's desire. We got the Will of Cho as a level 1 choice for, uh, for Ultralisk. And well, in the meantime... Uh, actually, Hazo Ops, right? Yeah, they play the other way around. And he's already a bit low, so is able to get out of the fight. Good for him. They're not doing too bad in the early game. Not too shabby. No cam camps have been taken, one for each team. But I don't really know what to expect from this. <laughs> it's just a little bit too wild. I guess at the early game, at least the cats are gonna have the upper hand. But then once we're gonna get into the middle and the late game, particularly around like 13, 16, 20, there the blue team should start to pick up a bit of momentum, potentially. So they are just trying to bully him around here. They're trying to go for Choga, but they're even getting a kill. They're getting a kill against Diablo. They're taking Leo down. What the fuck? What just happened? Huh? They got three kills? Greyman, Diablo, and Leo are destroyed? A uh, team? What? Yeah. Um, that is not good news. They were trying to bully Chogal around, and then they lost three heroes. That is disastrous. Um, yeah. Good luck with that. So, Murky's trying to just get those minion waves in the back, trying to proxy here. And gets shut down by Greymane, but that also means that they had to send an additional hero over. The big problem losing three heroes at this point is that your opponent, the blue team, now has a lead in experience that should allow them to get the early level 7, which is essentially what you really want for the first objective. And already they're taking the lead there. So, yeah, Chogal is going to move around and is going to come up towards the top in a moment after he gets the minion wave in the middle of the map. But they will have level 7. And Zagara, she's probably just going to try and match that as quickly as they can. But unless they're losing a hero now, this is going to be a great spot for the bathroom boys to be in. And there it is. They got level 7 and they immediately start trying to bully them further. So, yeah, good luck with that. We now got the glimmer of hope. And blue team has a lot of hope, I can tell you that much. Black Lagoon after the slime time. And they are working on objective number one. But at least the cats have level seven now as well. Zagara isn't here yet, so it's still a five versus four. But she is coming. And they haven't taken the lead yet. Soaking is actually doing a great job locking in a lot of that for his team, but he's gonna die. Leo obviously is the one that you want to uh, die in a situation like this. Hazu! <laughs> yeah, Hazu and Ultralis make it out, but Phoenix dies. So that's the bad news. Phoenix is gone. Murky, well, he's going to be back in a second. That's a bit of an aggressive one right here. Are you kidding me? Are you seriously? Straight in their face. Okay, so he moves the egg around, but the Mortar Punisher has still been claimed by the cats. So despite the fact that they lost a couple of heroes, they pulled that at least off. Now the good news is that it was a fantastic pull over the wall, but there's so much push power here.
that it might still become a problem for them. So nice whip into the wall. I like it. And Tirath, a bit low, but they're going for Zagara and they get that kill. Zagara is gone. Even a bit of body blocking on Diablo now. They're trying for Grey Main. Oh, Gregor! <laughs> Dino shows no mercy. And Diablo is also dead. So they kill three heroes again and they save their fort. You gotta give it to the bathrobe boys. They're playing this well. I mean, you're looking at that skin of Ultralisk and you already know what's up. <laughs> Never trust a Chogal player with a skin. Oh boy. Yeah, they're gonna get the early level 10. They're gonna get level 10 and then it is Octograph time, unless Masquerade is inting and picks the wrong old. Yeah, there it is. Planet Cracker and Octograph. That's the opportunity to uh, make Phoenix go and kill. Rega is dead and Captain Rex barely made it out with Zagara, but they got the support kill and that's pretty much what they wanted. Now they can go for Grey Mane and they're gonna get him too. Nine kills to one. They're absolutely murdering it. Beautiful plays by the bathroom boys. There's Octograp, they don't have the ult from Phoenix, and obviously Diablo's also a bit hit point heavy, but with another nice whip, they can get the kill here. Honestly, Death Knight, I have said it in the past, I'm saying it again. If you're that good with a whip on uh, Oriel, it clearly shows you have practice that allows only for two conclusions. Either you're a huge Indiana Jones fan, or you have a sex dungeon. It's one of the two. There's no other choice. And I've never seen Death Knight talk about Indiana Jones. Just saying. Just saying. Well, they get murky again. So, there's that. But in addition to this, can they get Gr Phoenix? Alright, he gets away. Phoenix gets away. They're already pushing uh, at the bottom of the map for more structures. And they're taking the towers down too. So, yeah. Mad amount of carnage. One level ahead. How can they only be a level ahead with nine kills of an advantage? Minion experience the same. These early game kills just don't matter. Crazy. So, yeah. look at this. Another whip. Death Knight is too good at this. Way too good. Octograb is out. And he didn't... Uh, did he get in there? What happened there? Seems like Dino didn't have his, his ult. No, he gets burned down. That kind of backfired. From, guys, we got this. Let's go. To, uh, I don't have my ult. And then he died. Yeah, the cats are not just giving up here. Not giving up all that easily. We get more. Obviously, with level 13. 13 is also going to get interesting and 60. I mean, we're going to get a lot here. The bullet is a bit of a problem for Chogal, Drain. What do you have in damage, actually? The bullet obviously doing wonders now for Greyman with 18,000. But even Leo is at 11k. Phoenix with 30. And, well, we're off to the races here with level 13. Bit of a lead on the objective. Murky is already moving in. Currently, Leoric is trying to occupy the entire thing here. But Chogal is moving in once more. Still has the assist of Oriel. And is already starting to pressure the doggies. Yeah, Ult is out. Very little consequence of that. But they start to take a slight lead on the, the objective. I don't really think they can... Unless they win team fights, just from wave clear alone, they cannot possibly win any of these objectives. They need to go in and win the team fight. I think this is the only realistic chance of winning an objective here. You go up against Liu, you go up against, against Zagara. There's like too much there. Grey main even. So yeah, you need to kill a couple of heroes and take full control over the shrine. Then you're in a good spot. But outside of that, it's just not happening. You need to commit. Fully committed. Which is what they're doing right now. We, by the way, get the surging dash and we also have the Twilight Nova. They are about to take the lead on this one, but it's not like the cats are going to give this up. So, yeah, there's the pull. And big damage. Murky dead. And Hazu gets caught. Uses the Molten Block. And still dies. Nicely done. I mean, it was a real good start into the fight for them, honestly. But now they're losing Choga, they're losing Phoenix. The uh, Planet Cracker just wasn't enough. And even with the damage that they were able to dish out, they had no chance of winning that fight there. So now we have tons of kills coming in for the Cats. They got the Frozen Punisher. That mid lane 4 doesn't stand a prayer. I mean, Frozen Punishers are insane. And so two forts are likely going to be lost now. The quick move towards the top. And this is solid. Real solid. 
we get at the bottom of the map some counter pressure done, but just look what's happening here in the middle. One fort is already gone and that Punisher is barely taking damage. So Chogal can now try and bait this over. The keep is not gonna fall, but that last fight showed clearly the problems. And two missing? Yeah, good news for them. Barely. Then Tomb catches? A different story. Octograb is ready, Planet Cracker isn't. Yeah, they get an ult out here. If Murky is around, they get an Octograb on him. Yeah, they don't even need it. Octograb is still ready, and yeah, that should be a dead Zagara. If Zagara gets Octograb, she's just dead. Unless she gets instantly saved by Rega, who was already gone at that point in time, there's just no way. So 13 kills to 6, they get 2. Chogal obviously more and more of a problem now in the late game. We have uh, Gal at 36,000 damage. He's still Phoenix that's rocking the numbers for the team with the 47k that he brings in. And there they go again. They go for Diablo and it doesn't really look good for Hero, does it now? Even with the heals, another whip and goodbye. He is gone and dropped. Jesus! What is happening? They're crushing them! Another double kill, just as Zagara is back. I mean, at least Diablo uh, was able to come back quickly. He had all of his souls. I mean, he's still at 25 right now. As I said in the past, th these are the souls of all of the uh, Blizzard executives that cancelled Heroes of the Storm and HGC. And Diablo just decided that they're way too evil and he's never going to release them. So that's why he always like spawns with 25 now. In the past, you know, before all of that happened, he still had zero, but now it's always 25. Oh, that ancestral! <laughs> Holy shit! And Zagara still dies. Zagara is still dead. Can they at least get Phoenix as a counter kill? Well, they can't. Now they're jumping in again. Carnage everywhere! They go for Chogal and they take him down. Chogal is gone and Death Knight, he can survive a bit longer but he's not going to make it. He's eventually gonna fall, he's dead. This is just an absolute bloodbath, this entire game. They're going blow for blow over and over again. 16 kills to 9 and yeah, generally I gotta give it to the cats. They might lose a lot more heroes here, it might look awesome and the Bathrobe boys get a kill. But factually, if you look at the minimap, two forts destroyed. It just seems like the red team is doing a little bit more with what they have. Every objective so far has gone over to the red team. And I don't know if they can change that. I honestly don't. Because the big problem here is... I mean, Leo dying at the top. Leorki against Murky. Okay, so he's able to get it. Lost the egg. But I need the blue team to win an objective if they want to have a chance to win this game. Because currently it's the cats that are dominating it. And as the game continues and the objective gets stronger, that's a problem. Level 16. So right now we got the Corrosive Saliva. Chogal is going to be under more and more pressure as this continues. We got Alpha Killer in. Chogal is having real problems here. I mean, massive ones. This objective, if they lose this too, oof. That would be a disaster. They're trying to get kills right now. Murky has to be careful here. Everybody is just funneling into the shrine. Red team falls back for a moment. But yeah, Choga has to be super careful. And he's also far haven't really done too much for him. Okay, Dainu is still safe here, still fine. Yeah, Chogal moving around quickly, gets entombed, perfect catch. Bullet is already out, Molten Block gets used quickly, and another wall stun against Dino. Phoenix in trouble, they're trying to push it onto Zagara, but just look how quickly Hazorbs is losing his hit points here. Greyman is shredding him, Greyman is murdering him, a lot of these ults just don't come through, and Hazu can't even move in properly, he's trying it anyways, but now he could get wall stunned any second, Murky is dead, 35 to 21 stacks, and the problem is still the same and it doesn't change. The objective is a problem for the bathrobe boys. It's a massive issue, and despite the fact that they're even experienced, whenever we see those punishers coming in, as the game continues, they're getting stronger and stronger, and the red team is going to get more value because of it, and they're pushing through the bottom fort, that is the Final four destroyed on the blue team side and more momentum now for the Cats. They're starting to make the plays here for keeps. Murky, he can fun around as much as he wants. And yes, 20 might change things a bit. But on 20, we also get buried alive. 
and I would not necessarily bank on that. It's going to give Dino a little bit more survivability for sure. But it's one team that's currently making the moves here, and it's not the blue team. They're losing Hazu and Ultra again, aren't they? If there's not a quick heal coming... Oh my god! Aegis! Where's the heal? No heal. No heal. Shogal is dead. Mithril Maze is completed. If they don't get enough, they lose Dainu, and now they're losing the game. Yep. It's a disaster. Keep is gone. They're gonna go for game here. Right, right here, right now. They got the damage. They got Grave and they got Zagara. That's way too much damage. Way too much damage. This is over. This is absolutely over. We're going to game three. We are going to game number three. Level 20 is in. And again, you got Zagar, you got Grey, and you can take that core down whenever you want. GG, the Cats take the W on Infernal Shrines. And we are going to the final map of the winner bracket final. Game number three. We are going to Battlefield of Eternity. Yeah, the bathrobe boys, they might have overdone it a bit with Murky and... Uh, <laughs> Murky and Shogal. <laughs> to be honest, at this point, I would normally expect them to just come in and say like, alright, we're going to go back to a normal composition. But then again, we have a double elimination system here. So if they're really confident, they might just say, you know, whatever. Bust out Butcher. Again, quick reminder, the one hero that was not played in Meta Madness at all, at no point, was Valera. Nobody wanted to play Valera. Nobody. Probius was only played one single time, and that was in the qualifiers, not in the playoffs. But Valera didn't see any play whatsoever. Everybody else was picked. Butcher was picked multiple times, but when it came to Valera, everybody was just like, Nope! Not interested. So, we got Blaze, we have as a ban, and we got Nuborak banned out, BOE obviously. Vala is still up. Hanzo must have been played, right? Has Hanzo been played? I don't think so. Hanzo is still up? I mean, you have Li Ming, Hanzo if I'm not mistaken, uh, we have Vala. So, plenty of heroes to get good damage in against us. But, yeah, Vala in particular, I want to see a Vala game. Don't ban her, please. And when gets banned. That's a good ban. Ban the crybaby. Ban the pretty boy. So. And they ban my F again. They already banned her in the, I believe the second game. I'm not quite sure if they banned her in game number two. But against Ultralis, getting rid of my F is always a really good idea. That leaves us with our first pick. And it should honestly be one of the damage dealers that is really nice on uh, this map. <laughs> it's, it's hard to judge what exactly the bathrobe boys are going to do here. That's one of the bigger problems because they've been memeing, they love to have some fun, and they go for Uther first. Now, Death Knight is the one that picks it, so they could play Uther just simply as a support, but every single time that you're seeing Uther picked, it immediately lets some alarm bells go off in the back of your head because you know that they could play a double support. And one of the reasons why you would want to play a double support is either Vala or Suljin. So, those are the two options. Which means that one of them can now be picked away. But they don't go for either. So Muradin Li Ming starts off, uh, us off. Which means that now they could decide to pick either Vala or Suljin. If they want to go down that path. It's actually kind of interesting. If the draft... Okay, they go Trace Anterior. Eh, fair enough. Actually a little bit disappointed here. I really thought they would go for uh, one of the tiers I just highlighted and go for a double support with it. If the draft philosophy of the first two games would have been uh, followed through, they would have done it. But I guess they want to win this game. <laughs> there were situations in the past where they overdid it in game number two, where some of their picks, it was especially true of Team Wow. And then they got murdered in the third game, so they got a little bit too cocky after winning the first map trolled in game number two or tried to have some fun didn't work and then he lost the third map as well so yeah but again we now have the next quick ban and it's going to be the final one for this series could target the side laner here there's actually no support that has been played yet yeah picked it either by the the cats 
And well, it's the panda. Soaking has been playing Chen a couple of times already on uh, Battlefield of Eternity. So they're targeting him directly. They target him right away. And yeah, that brings us into our double pick. I still want to see Vala. I cannot believe that neither. Has Hanzo been played? He must have, right? Game number one, I, I don't remember him being played. So how is it possible that we are in Battlefield of Eternity and neither of the teams has looked at Hanzo or Vala and said like, yeah, that's a good idea. We get Sergeant Hammer, which is definitely not a bad choice. But some of the best heroes against the Immortal and some of the ones that we normally get picked all the time have not been chosen yet. And it is mind-blowing to me. So, BOE. And, yeah, final to pick. Ultralis, Kazu. We need a side laner. And then they need to decide what exactly they want to do with this. We get, okay, Samoro and Hanzo. Thank you. At least we're getting Hanzo. Thank God. I was just doubting my sanity there for a moment. That would have just been insane. But yeah. Let's see what we're going to get. Urel, she's the final pick. Battlefield of Eternity, everybody. Let's go. Game number three, the final map in the winner bracket final. Game number three, a decision is to be made, and we have uh, the Bathro boys with Hazorps on Hanzo, Ultralisk on Samuro, we got Death Knight on Uther, and Masquerade is playing Tyrael with our final pick being Tracer for Dino. On the right side of the map, it is the Cats with Dark Reader, aka Drak here, on Muradin. Soaking is playing Urel. After his Chen got banned, Hirath on Sergeant Hammer, we get Deviant on Brightwing, and Captain Rex is playing Li Ming. Okay, off to the races, let's go. We're going to see which team moves on to the grand final of qualifier number one for the Banshee Cup, and which team is able to yeah, avoid the loser's bracket, therefore. Loser of this map drops down, we'll have to go for a lower bracket run on the second day of the tournament. But here we go. This is actually... I like that Ultralisk is now playing Samuro. I personally, I, I can't help myself, but I, I hate playing against Samuro. I am absolutely incapable of properly playing him, but I love watching him. It's one of those heroes that I just really enjoy. And I love that we had so many games with Samuro also in uh, Meta Madness, for example, because you just got to see that all the time. Sven has been playing him a ton, and it was just absolutely brilliant. A good Samuro player is just fun to watch. And teams have gotten really good at adapting to him. So we had multiple games where Samuro was, you know, trying to just dodge some damage. He went deep into enemy territory to destroy a structure or push a lane out or whatnot. And then he got shut down very nicely by teams just covering all the exits, which is awesome, which is really, really awesome. So if you have teams that are just doing their best and they know how to A, play the hero, but also how to properly defend against him, makes it super entertaining. Now, we have him starting things off with the way of the wind. When it comes to level one choices, nothing crazy that really stands out here. But down to the bottom of the map, we now have also Hazu still poking. Finally, we got the Hanzo pick. Came way too late in the draft. Honestly, I was a little bit shocked to see that. I was just like, what? So, yeah. Okay, so, either way. One series, by the way, that I've been starting to watch lately, and I feel I've been a bit late to the party, but I never wanted to watch it because I always thought that it was stupid. Uh, but as very light entertainment, I'm not saying this is the best series in the entire world, don't get me wrong, it's definitely not like an epic or anything. But I always, I never wanted to watch the series because I always thought it would be dumb. Uh, wait a second, first we got the fight down here, I mean the camp is already decided. But Hazel's a little bit low, the same can be said of Death Knight, and Uther, ah, he gets away, alright. But Hazel, ooh, he gets hammered, it's hammer time, and Drakir gets the kill. Yeah, so I actually like Big Bang Theory. I loved it, and it's one of those series that I love to watch, and I really enjoyed it. But one series that I never wanted to watch because I always thought, okay, this is going to be dumb, uh, stupid, they're just uh, trying to capitalize on it, was uh, Young Sheldon. I gotta say, it has its certain charm. I kind of find it entertaining. Maybe it's a little bit of guilty... I don't know if you have to call that guilty pleasure watching. It's obviously not something that is going to change the world. It's not like it's best high-level quality entertainment, but it's fairly funny. It's better than I expected. I thought it would be absolutely, like, trash, 
but it's kind of funny. Not the best in the world, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying this is gonna win any Oscars, but it's kind of entertaining. So, one kill to zero, that's all that we got. Haas was killed by Muradin, but it also cost them the advantage on the objective. With level four, we're also getting siege tactics. We have the reverberation in the house. And yeah, maybe can they win the entire thing? Seems like the red team at least wants to make sure that they're defending. Yeah, Sergeant Hammer is whittling away the hit points of the blue team. But Li Ming gets killed quickly and she's not going to be the only one. Li Ming gets hammered, the fruit fly just got hammered, uh, that's bad news. And Sergeant Hammer is not able to keep up with the pressure that's coming from the bathrobe boys. So not only did we see two heroes removed, but we also had the... Oh, it's going to be a third. Yep, Soaking dies too. Three heroes down and they get the objective. So not only do they spot a lead in experience, but they're also in a very solid position when we're talking about just pushing through, getting level 7, and yeah, pulling ahead here. So let's see what they're actually going to get. Because right now, they're bursting through the wall. We have level 7 talents, as already explained, so that's the big lead that they have over the red team. And it's making it so much harder for the cats to defend. They got Sasha and Hammer at least, so that's great. But the problem is she doesn't have any mobility. So she's doing her best. But not only does the wall go down, they can also do some damage on the fort. They won't be able to take the entire thing apart. But that's 50% of the hit points gone. And that is pretty good. More damage done down at the bottom of the map. Ultralist doesn't really care too much about URL here. So it's pushing this out fairly easily. And finally, Sergeant Hammer gets some mobility. Unless she, of course, fat fingers her talent. Pay attention now. This one's important. Okay. How about Siege Mode? All right, all right. So, Sergeant Hammer, they gotta deal with her a bit. We got also uh, in regards to builds for Tyrion. I mean, a typical build that you would play with a Sanctification. So this is what we can kind of expect, I suppose, if you're diving in hard and you're trying to go for Hammer. For a while I was thinking if they might go into Judgment regardless, but I don't really think so. We'll see. If they're just thinking about engaging and having Tracer jump in and maybe follow up with a Hansa area, they could go Judgment. They could really just like try and sync this up properly. In a situation like this, it would definitely give them some benefits. But Draken makes it out. Brightwing had to come in for a heal and help out a bit. But it's a pretty comfortable leading experience that the uh, blue team is now holding. And that's honestly always a nice move. When you're, if you're in a situation where you're half a level ahead this early in the game already, it's very comfy game. You're going to get the early level 10. You're going to maybe even uh, be able to get a halftime show for free on one of the objectives. So, yeah, time will tell. But they are still f just like zoning them out a little bit. And honestly, Hiroth is not getting as much done with Sergeant Hammer as we would normally expect in a game like this. So uh, they are struggling to get a good position there. And they are struggling also a lot to deal with, uh, with Samoro. Ultralisk is just racking that side lane, and Urel has nothing on him right now. Really struggling on this. And it's starting to become more and more of a problem, and Ultralisk is just gonna have fun there. So, level 10, any moment, and it should give them a mad lead here. Unless the Ming can come in and just like pop one of them, it's gonna be a problem. So, yeah, right now they're getting the attacks in. Halftime show is already won, and it's on, only going to get worse from there because now they have level 10 abilities. It is sanctification indeed, so yeah, no combo that they're trying to execute with Hanzo's arrow and a potential judgment play, which we have seen. But yeah, they go for this, and I actually don't really know why. They're trying to zone them away a little bit by time for the camp at the top, I suppose, but they got to be super careful because if they're now losing heroes here too, that would be a, that would be a nightmare. It's bad enough that it's such a huge shield on the Immortal. I mean, look at this. This is pretty much 100% what they have. But the camp at the top is now getting destroyed. The towers have done most of the work already, and everybody else is starting to move down to the bottom of the map. And here we should see the fort fall. I really don't think that they can save this. It should be impossible. Like, it's, it's just way too much to handle. Yeah. Samuro is still at the top. Hanzo with an arrow. Nicely dodged by Sarge. Well, not dodged, but siege tactics being used. But, yeah, you can you can kiss that fort goodbye. 
It's only the second Immortal, but still, this one is being won. Sanctification is already out, so they got that. Samuro is at the top. Samuro is going to get the top four. They're going to take the fort at the bottom of the map as well. So they're going to walk away, essentially, with two forts that will be destroyed here. This is about as good as it gets as early in the game. Essentially, they just killed both of the fountains. That's one of the big ones. Both fountains gone in that situation. So up at the top, he's pushing this even further, trying for another quick hit on this. But yeah, things are looking pretty, pretty good now for the Bathrobe boys. In experience, maybe they're not too far ahead just now, but they have just, again, they still have all their structures. They destroyed two of the forts. There's no fountains anymore on the top and the bot lane, which makes it so much harder to just fall back and tap a fountain. You can only do it in the middle, essentially. And yeah, it's not a kill-heavy game. We have seen some of these fights, but good reactions, not only from Tiro with Sanctification, but you also have a Divine Shield as a panic button. And Ultraliski himself is doing exactly what he's supposed to do. I mean, he's pissing people off six days to Sunday. If you're playing tomorrow, that's pretty much a job description. Be as annoying as possible. Let's go. And he's doing that. He's pushing the top lane out. He got a lot of damage done there. Then you have also the, ne uh, the Nexus Mosquito, Tracer. Just like buzzing around people, getting a little bit of damage in, and yeah, hoping to prep some kills up. And Dino's being rewarded, being top damage in the game. He's sitting at 22,000, even ahead of Hanzo. I mean, you can already see how this is going right now. The, the the red team is playing Sergeant Hammer and essentially trying to be the team. You know that that just makes the plays. It just moves in and pushes every out. And the exact opposite is the case here. Now we're getting the next Immortal spawning and level 13 will be ready in uh, a few seconds. So we're talking another uh, talent advantage for uh, the bathrobe boys. And they still have to deal with all of that. They need to catch some heroes here. They need to set a gank up that works. Starbolt is being dodged again. Wave of Force didn't do enough. Now we got 13. The camp at the top has also been taken by Hanzo in this case. And it's just another advantage for them. So uh, the cats, I mean, they better pray that they have a chance to take something here. But there's also another fact, and that's just simply that the, the clear is so much faster for the blue team. If they have everybody on the immortal, they're just so much stronger on this. Samoro, Hanzo, it's like they have too many heroes that are doing good damage. And it is a struggle for the cats to meet to that. Sergeant Hammer is great when you're controlling space and when your opponent has to push into you. It's not all that amazing uh, when you're playing a game like this where you have to just be super flexible, quick on the map, and where you're not able to control the space the way you like. Divine Shield is out, Sanctification overlapping, so that's a bit of a problem. But they saved Hazops, which was essentially the whole game plan here. And now they go for the Immortal and it's going to be another big one. They take it, it's another big immortal, the red team needs a kill. And they might get it here. Hazops is low and Hazops is down. Nice. Hazops destroyed. The immortal at the top lane might even get them a bit more value considering that the camp is currently pushing for ah well, Catapult is griefing in the back again. I, f I so hate this. I really hate this. That Blizzard just never fixed the pathing for those catapults. I hate it more than anything you can imagine. Every time that I see a team lining things up perfectly and then catapults are just griefing behind a siege giant camp, I just want to scream. I'm just sitting there, I was like, Argh! That pathing pisses me off so much, it's insanity. So yeah, they're trying to go for the kill. Death Knight indeed goes down. That buys a bit of time for not only the Immortal at the top, but also for Samora at the bottom of the map. The idea here is, of course, not to take the keep down, but the idea is to get some damage done and hopefully open the wall up for later on in the game. The defense is still solid. They are losing hit points at the keep. They lost the top wall. They lost at the bottom of the map, but this could have been so much worse. For the Cats, this was about saving their keeps, and they were able to do that. They haven't lost the keep yet, this objective didn't do nearly as much as the blue team was hoping for, simply because Hanzo got killed, Hanzo's got destroyed there, and then afterwards, yeah, Uther at the top fell too. So, the cats are doing everything that they can to stay in experience range. They have level 15 coming up, still half a level behind, but again, that's manageable. 26,000 damage now for Sergeant Hammer, 30,000 for Tracer, and they are still sieging up. Still trying to go for the talent advantage. Attempting to use the numbers that they have on the map because Uralis forced at the top to try and get experience here. 
She's not here because he's trying to pad her, her siege uh, damage stacks. It's all about trying to get experience for level 16. That's the game plan. Catch up as quickly as you can. And they're actually trying to catch her, which they are able to do. But, yeah, doesn't mean anything. They can still take the camp here on the other hand, which is what we're seeing now. So, yeah, the game actually is progressing as is. We have level 60 now. Next objective should be announced soon, and this time it's a chance for the cats to force an actual battle because they will have the same talent as their opponent. They don't have to be too careful about this. We're now getting also Benediction, by the way. Press the advantage. So, here's a chance to maybe finally win a fight. Giant Killer is ready. We also got Diamond Skin after Illusionist. Damn. Even Diamond Skin. Yeah, Li Ming, look at that. Okay. Well, it's objective time. And this is a bit of a big one. If you don't win this, uh, how are you trying to take the game? So, Hazu is poking, and the red team has to now find an opening. They have to find an opening. They gotta find a chance here. They gotta do something. Samuro at the top. He's going for the Shaman. He's actually gonna get this super quickly. It's great. Nearly no time wasted. Came in, dum dum dum, and gone. And you at the bottom of the map is investing a lot more time. And Samuro, he can push the top out a little bit. Keep in mind that this keep has already gotten attacked earlier. So it's lost some hit points. If you have all of a sudden a few catapults coming in, you can do a lot here. So Samuro is pushing this back out. Tracer is still at the bottom of the map. Has done the same thing to escort those minions in first. And essentially what they're attempting to do is for somebody to react to the bot and the top lane. And once that happens, they can move for the immortal and try to take it here. Napalm getting fired out by Eras. Samura at the top has pushed it out further. Hazu, nice! And Sergeant Hammer is dead. Sergeant Hammer gets killed, got hit hard by that arrow, and then the follow up was immediate and it was perfect. Halftime show is won as well. Now you have Muradin about to die. Brightwing might save the day for Drakia and does. But everybody is on the run. Everybody had to fall back here. And now they're getting attacked on multiple fronts. They have to deal with the catapult at the top. They have to deal with this pressure at the bottom of the map. And this is destroys the entire wall. And it's an open hunting season for Red Team Immortals. This one goes down. And it's another big, big shield for the blue team. Huge objective now. Big objective for them. And a big opportunity. They have at the bot lane a quick push coming. And this is the chance to go for a keep. And you look at Samuro, he's already splitting from the team again. It's already back towards the top. They have an entire level lead right now. And he is doing damage. Slowly and steadily, he's going to get this one. And it's all about the cats trying to get a kill now. They kind of have to try and pull that off. Get a kill somehow. Make a play here. Or you might lose the game. And they abandon the top keep more or less. So this keep is going to fall. Top keep is going to fall. They're throwing everything down at the bottom of the map. And it's pretty much a disaster. This is bad. This is really, really bad now for the Cats. They are getting closer and closer to that loser's bracket because the top keep is now about to be gone and Samora's already moving down to the bottom of the map to ensure that they can make a play full on for game. If they even want to. Because with both keeps gone, you know you're on a clock. There's a huge timer and it's ticking away. They don't have level 20 yet. They don't have to force this. And they don't. But there's only the core standing. The red team is trying to force it. They know that level 20 would be a disastrous for them. But Samura's already on the core. Samura's on the core. They are chasing. Samura's just simply going for the core. And he's getting damage in. There's catapults already. Urel is moving back. The core is down to 80% now. 80% on the core. So they lost, they lost 23%. And they just have nothing. Absolutely nothing. Level 20, any moment. Especially if they get the mercenary camp at the bottom of the map. And it's bad. It's bad for the cats. Well, redemption is in. Three bladed style. And you have to gap one and a half levels. That, on the other hand, I mean, okay, he has redemption. Uther is the one that they don't care about right now, and Samuro is back on the core. They're just trying to backdoor this now. Masquerade is moving in again. Samuro went to the core for just a second, decided against it, is moving back down, had already some in here. Now they go for Sergeant Hammer. With the hammer gone, with the hammer being dropped, 
there's a chance for them to even push full in. Or just go for the Immortal. I mean, honestly, at this point, you just have to decide how you want to win the game, I suppose. The cats are debating whether they should type GG in caps or not. That's the only real decision that they have to make. That would be a miracle defense if they somehow can pull that off. But it is highly unlikely. Highly unlikely to say the least. Yeah, all the arena is in, 60%, and they're just going for the A move here. Playing around them, stunning them out a bit, and well, the Bathro boys, they're moving on to the grand final of the first qualifier of the Banshee Cup as the Cats get dropped down into the lower bracket. GG, well played.